Let's go to 690.5. Ground fault protection. PV systems must have ground fault protection to reduce fire hazards. And you can see right here, it says on here, this unit contains DC ground fault protection. Do inverters have, I mean, is this just the way it works? Everybody has ground fault protection, so I don't have to even cover this rule at all? Is this like, why cover it when it's, in other words, was this something that was put in to get the manufacturers to put ground fault protection? And now that we got ground fault protection, it's part of the UL standard. We don't need to have to worry about whether you have ground fault protection or not. Or do you have to really look for that to make sure it is, there is ground fault protection? Uh, for a regular uh, grid tied interactive system, it would have the GFP circuit already built into it. Okay, so if you're using the proper inverter for an interactive grid tied system, it's going to have the ground fault protection. Right, the battery backup systems, though, uh, would have a separate uh, GFP device within the charge controller. So it's automatically, so it's part well, that's of part of the UL listed product. When I buy listed label, I mean listed modules, combiners, um, inverters. I'm not going to have to worry about the ground fault protection because it's already built in to the systems that are required to be. That's correct. Okay, so we can let that one go. Ground fault protection labels and markings. A warning label must be on in the inverter state in the following. Is this done by the manufacturer? Yes. Sometimes. It's, it's, uh, Sometimes. It's, yeah, it, it may not be. Older inverters wouldn't have it. Uh, newer inverters should have it on, on their listing label or adjacent to the listing I label. I need to make a note to make sure that my textbook indicate that <laughs> That, that that label should be part of the manufacturer. And the same thing on the previous one, that 6995, that you know, it really isn't something an installer has to worry about. This would be part of the UL standard. All right, so that probably the UL standard would specify that you have to have a label that goes with it. If you have ground fault protection, then, um, then the label is required. That's, that's a label that came from the manufacturer. Here's an example of the label. Now right. let's see what the, let me see what the label says. A warning label must be on the uh, state in the following. Guys, take a look at the language on that because sometimes the code says on labels it shall state this, and sometimes it says um, shall state stating, something like this. Stating the following. Okay, so this is absolutely what it's supposed to say. Warning, electric shock hazard. If a ground fault is indicated, normally grounded conductors may be ungrounded and energized. Is that what it says in the code? Yep. Yes. Okay, now let's see what the manufacturer label says. Both AC and DC sources are terminated inside this equipment. Each circuit must be individually disconnected before servicing. The ground fault interrupter fuse is located inside the unit. If a ground fault is indicated, the normal grounded conductors may be energized and de-energized and ungrounded. So looking at this label, this is a warning. This somewhere is a caution. This has a lot more words than this. If a ground fault is indicated, normal grounded conductors If a ground fault is indicated, the normal... Okay, it does say it, doesn't it? It says Personally. it in the last sentence. It doesn't the last say electric day. shock hazard, right. though. Right. More electric shock hazard. And it says caution. Yeah. So, Dave, what are you going to do? Do you, do you say, okay, listen, I'm not going to accept it. The manufacturer is going to have to learn to follow the code. But, Bill, hold on. You're the kind of like the guy for the manufacturers. Should they, not the manufacturer, guy for them, but I mean, you know, you're, you're the technical guy. You're the, you know, the guy that's trying to help them understand and, and facilitate the whole process. You're on the code panel. What do we do with something like this? Well, I, I think they they got most of the language there, but uh, a, an inspector could easily say this this is the exact language that I want to see, and you would have to make another sign and put it on the on the device. Because see, a caution is different than a warning. Yeah. So that yeah. happens to us regularly. Is that right? Oh yeah, they So the want label, so we said that, okay, yeah, yeah, these labels are probably automatically by the manufacturers, but those labels might not be meeting the code. We've right. actually gone into the code book and exactly word for word had to reproduce all the labels and keep them in all of our trucks because some inspectors will only accept the exact verbiage in the code book. Well, you know what, the code is a code, right? Here's what it says, and that's why I asked you guys to look to see, did it say yeah. something like this? Right. Or did it say, it shall be this? Yeah. Yeah. And the code panel went through a lot of work to specifically identify what we want, and if we allow manufacturers to come up with whatever they want to say, it slowly migrates away from what it was supposed to be. Right. So I can see an inspector saying, no, that's not the label. There's Sorry, no, there's no reason problem. for the manufacturer to paraphrase like they right. did right there. Yeah, so. that, yeah, and that, that, but you know what it does is I think it takes away from the, the, the hazard, I mean, the concern, because it's a caution, then you get so much business. You didn't get to the last sentence before you find out about, you know, it, it could be energized. 